Hey everyone, what's going on? Rob here from Captain Rob Games. Today I wanted to do a quick little video uh, going over why I think that Dead by Daylight has kind of become unfun at higher levels, especially at, at rank 1 for um, Killer and rank 1 for Survivor. Um, I want to go over a couple reasons of why I think this has happened and why I think it's mostly what the community is doing and maybe discuss ways that we can think about fixing it. So let's begin. So first let's talk about what I'm going to refer to as the optimization arms race. Now, in Dead by Daylight, um, when newer players are running around, they're kind of confused, they don't really know what they're doing, and they maybe do a little bit of gens, but eventually they will be killed off because they're not really being productive. Now, as you get to higher levels, survivors get better and better, and they start saying, okay, well, the objective of the game is to complete the generators. Let us complete the generators as fast as possible. Now, this makes sense, um, because the killer's job is to kind of force you off those, those generators to kind of create pressure. The problem is what happens when the killer is unable to consistently generate pressure throughout the game. Now this is going to branch into a couple problems, but the first problem that I want to address is the importance of the first chase. One of the biggest problems that I see in Dead by Daylight right now is that due to the nature of gen speed and how fast generators pop when survivors are efficiently completing generators, the killer has to be extremely, extremely fast at finding a survivor and getting them off a generator, downing them as fast as possible. Now, I have had games where I was the first survivor found by a killer. I managed to stall out the chase for maybe a minute, and then using perks such as Dead Hard um, to extend the chase and Iron Will to escape the chase, the killer ends up 90 seconds into the game not having any downs. Now, at this point, given how generator speed works, if the other three survivors were split up working on generators, Three generators are done, and the killer has accomplished absolutely nothing. At this point in time, the game is usually just over. The first minute, minute and a half of a game can sometimes just decide a game. And at that point in time, you are completely reliant on the survivors making mistakes to let you back in the game. If they just do two more generators and have two people off to the side, you're going to lose. And there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. So the first chase is very, very over hyped up i don't think it should be as important as it is and i think that behavior needs to implement a mechanic to make the start of the game be less about survivors spawning next to generators and just instantly working on them and maybe create some something more interactive like the survivors spawn away from generators have to find them something because killers are basically being forced to run corrupt intervention a lot of the time just to have a chance of maybe getting a down before the generator pops. And I think that that's particularly problematic. Now, why do I think that this is an issue? So we've all seen those games where maybe one or two hooks happen and then all five generators are completed. Now, that's not particularly fun because what makes Dead by Daylight fun is the interaction between the survivors and the killers. If you're just doing generators and your one teammate runs the killer for a minute or two and you're so far ahead that you actually have to throw the game to let the killer be back in it, I mean, how is that fun? You're basically do you're playing solitaire. You're playing Mouse One Simulator, right? So, I think it's a problem because it, it lacks interactivity between the survivors and the killers when the survivors are winning too much. And for the record, I've played games against killers where they were good killers, and they just lost their first chase, and they were blown out of the water with gen speed. And the big reason why this is a problem is because it forces the killer to play in a way that is not fun for the survivors to try to get back into the game. That's tunneling, camping, trying to force people out of the game, trying to force people to two hooks, things that kind of lack interactivity. And this in turn forces the survivors to do things that are unfun, such as, well, just not interacting with the killer. Go do generators if they're going to face camp your teammate. And it creates this cycle where the optimal play is sometimes something that's not at all fun. First survivor wins his chase really badly, killer finally gets a hook, he has to camp, or he has to force that person out of the game as fast as possible. So the other survivors try to finish the generators because they know that if they lose one of their survivors, that they're going to be kind of screwed, and there's not a whole lot they can do about it. And I actually do have um, a proposed solution to this, something that I think would fix this problem. I think that we can safely, drastically increase the speed in which it takes to um, complete generators. We can jump that up from about 80 seconds to somewhere like 120 seconds or something extreme like that if we make the following change. These survivors should never actually lose their capability to complete generators. If you have a mechanic where somehow it's like a work better under pressure or under stress, something along those lines, when the first survivor is killed off, 
the other three survivors then get a boost of 33% to their generator speed. Maybe to their healing speed and other stuff. Um, when two survivors are done, both survivors have double generator speed. So you always have the consistent maximum capability of how fast you can do generators. So tunneling a player off is no longer effective because your, the other players just become stronger as a result. And I think that this could fix a lot of problems because you no longer have a true incentive to tunnel someone out and you actually get to play the game longer because generators take longer to complete. So I think that that's something that they should consider, creating mechanics where you're not incentivized to tunnel or camp players out of the game because the other players get stronger and you actually have a reason to go take multiple chases and give the other players the fun experience of why we all try to play DVD. The second topic that I wanted to talk about is that matchmaking is kind of a disaster. And I understand that this isn't entirely on behavior. Sometimes it's who is queued at this moment, let's get a game going. No one wants to wait in a 10 minute queue. Um, but I would also say that no one wants to wait in a 10 minute queue and then get put in a game where the matchmaking is, is really off. And to give you an example of this, I had a game where there was a level 18, a 19, and a 20, and they were brand new players. They, after the game, came to my chat and told me, hey, like we've been playing two hours, we're brand new. And I was playing at red rank, and our killer was a rank 9 nurse who actually was fairly decent and knew how to blink and hit people from the blinks. Like, they were actually a decent nurse. So the problem is they look at this and they say, oh, well, a red ranker and then three newer players, that should equal out. We'll just put a middle ground killer. Unfortunately, for those, those of you who have played DBD a lot, you know that's not how it works. Because one player can't do five generators, right? Um, the chases are going to end really quickly for the other players because they're not going to know what to do. They're going to give a lot of free downs. It's going to generate a lot of pressure. Um, let's say, okay, I realize I have to take, I have to take the chases. I'm recognizing that these are new players. You take the chases. Um, the killer focuses on you, and it doesn't matter because your teammates aren't doing generators. So you can have a two-minute chase against the rank nine. Maybe he never catches you, but eventually he just gives up on you, and you gained almost nothing for it. Because the other players, whenever they're in the terror radius, they start hiding because they're newer players and they don't really know what to do. So they're not really being productive with their time. So the matchmaking creates this issue. And for killers, especially me as a rank one, if I find a weak link on a team, I basically try to focus on them because I know that it's free downs. So you down them, you force other teammates to peel off generators to go pick them off the hook. You then can start chases on other people without losing generator time. And it kind of snowballs like that. And that actually gives the killer the advantage. Um, sometimes you'll see four red rankers going up against a yellow ranker. I can't explain that. So the matchmaking is still kind of a disaster, and unfortunately, with how the game goes, lopsided matches are really not fun. Because lopsided matches for survivors are usually one really good survivor gets chased almost the entire game, the other survivors hold mouse one on a generator, and then the game's over, and it's kind of boring. And then it flips, because in the end game uh, situation, oftentimes those players realize that they're outmatched, and they just bring Noed. So it goes from the survivors being gods to basically the killer now having this perk, which makes them faster, and instant down literally every single player. So it just feels like it's it's just a shift of like who is the extreme power role instead of actually having like a little bit more balanced of interactions, which can cre create a very unfun experience. On the flip side, when I play rank one killers like an Oni or something, and I play against a new team, they don't really have a chance. Now, I usually go a little bit easier on them, and if I see that the team is newer, I do try to give them like a full 12 hooks. I try to do 1 1 1 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 3 3 on their hook states because um, I think it makes it more fun and we can actually enjoy the game. It's like a challenge that I choose to accept, but a lot of killers won't do that. Um, and I had a game against a spirit where she tunneled a player and she downed her four times. Ate, ate a decisive strike and three hooked her and at five generators had completely tunneled a player out of the game I then proceeded to run her for five generators before she could down me with two players doing five generators So it's like the mismatch is Kind of a problem and it makes the game unfun in a lot of different ways So hopefully they figure something out of matchmaking or some way to balance the game so that the differences in skill levels You can still actually get things done because the whole rainbow ranks thing is a true problem now, the final problem that I wanted to talk about is the whole survive with friends versus solo queue issue. Um, I'm actually going to discuss a little bit about a game, Home Sweet Home Survive, um, which is a game that recently came out, and it's sort of a, a DVD remake with different concepts. Um, and first off, I will say that the mechanics are more fun. I know that I mentioned that generators are kind of unfun to do in DVD. Their mechanics are actually a little bit more interesting. Their skill checks are a little bit more engaging. 
Um, and there's a lot more like searching and finding things and taking them to the right place, which I think makes the general survivor experience more fun. But the big thing is that Dead by Daylight, for whatever reason, does not have a communication system. The only way that you can communicate with other players is through pointing or waving them over to you through their two button emote system. Now, for those of you that have played Home Sweet Home, you know that that game has built in sort of pings. It has a ping system that a lot of other games have, especially first person shooter games. Now, this is critical because communication in a game like that, it makes the difference a lot of times between winning and losing. And in Dead by Daylight, what I've noticed is that the solo queue experience is frequently horrific. Even with good players, they will play extremely inefficiently because they're often not aware of who is going for a hook or where to find a teammate to heal. Whereas players who might not even be that good at the game, if they're in communications, they can kind of synchronize to meet up with other players to heal who's going for the unhook, who's in chase, who needs to take chase, who needs to hide and kind of stay alive to keep your four, all four players alive. Um, communications are just busted strong in Dead by Daylight, and it's a part of the game, and I, I feel like at this point you really can't take Discord away from it, but the lack of any kind of system to help out solo queue players makes that solo queue experience horrific in many cases. The number of times where I've seen another player that's a solo queue, and I'm like, if I had comms right now, we would easily all escape this, but because I don't have comms, I can't communicate something, and you just watch the player run away, um, into a, a trapper trap that you knew was there, that you couldn't tell them because they're not in comms, things like that. So there is a big, big problem between players who have communications getting an extreme advantage over solo queues. And as a killer, you can usually tell when it's a solo queue and when it's a survive with friends. Sometimes uh, rank 1's very, very good players um, that play at a high level can act as if they're survive with friends. But for most people, it's an incredible unfair advantage and behavior I really believe needs to implement some sort of a ping system or communication system so that solo queues can have a chance. Because right now, my personal opinion is that the game is balanced that survive with friends have an extreme advantage over killer, and I believe that killer has an extreme advantage over solo queue um, based on where the game is currently balanced. With that all said, I do think that efficient survivors have a very big advantage over killers. Um, so yeah, that, those, are, those are the main things that I'm looking at, and that's part of the reason why I'm not really playing it as much on stream and not really playing it as much in general. I hope that they make some fun changes. They really need to experiment with stuff. With Home Sweet Home coming out, they've shown this, this genre can be so much better, that there's so much more that you can do with it, and you can really expand and become a better game. So my hope is that behavior will step up and make some of these changes, but until then, we'll see. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned a thing or two. Um, as always, feel free to ask me any questions you guys have about what it's like uh, Red Rank Survivor, Red Rank Killer, what I think about the current meta, what's healthy, what's, what's unhealthy, how to change the game, etc. If you agree, be sure to um, hit that like button. If you don't agree, hit that like button anyway, because why not? Feel free to subscribe if you like more content like that. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.